Hi, friends. Um, thank you, Linda. I'm going to try not to cry. Um, my husband, David, and I are so proud to be part of the cancer support community. They have supported me and my family through extraordinary things. Um, and tonight is especially poignant because we are presenting the inaugural, isn't it? It's always like super special when you're there for the first time, right? And you guys are all there for the first time. Marin Maisie Award for Empowerment. So later you're gonna hear from Marin's amazing husband, Jason Daniele, and experience an uplifting tribute to her inspirational legacy. But um, I wanna share something from the heart about what honoring her means to those of us in the entertainment community who admire her so much. As actors, at the very core, we're storytellers. We create these characters who make us laugh and cry and sometimes put people in jail um, and <laughs> challenge conventional thought and take on causes for justice. And it's my belief that our visibility as storytellers comes with deep responsibility. And sometimes that responsibility is magnified when we face personal challenges. After she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, Marin took on the role of an advocate for other cancer patients with the same combination of grace and power that made her such a beloved and respected member of our community. She passed away on September 13th of last year, but someone of her caliber as actor and advocate never leaves us. Her spirit calls on us to be fearless in empowering ourselves and those around us. Tonight, it is my deep honor to introduce the continuing story of a movement called Team Marin. Who has a bracelet? Put up your bracelet. Everyone needs a bracelet by the end of the night, okay? The setting is Times Square. The moment is the New York City half marathon held on March 17th of this year. The Team Marin Messengers are two Broadway powerhouses, Brian Darcy James and D Jason Daniele. And on what's sure to be an emotional day for him, Amy caught up with Jason as he neared the 11 mile mark. All right, uh, first of all, here you are just past mile 11. Yeah. You guys are looking good. How do you feel? Doing great. It's great to have company. Old friends running through Times Square. We yeah. dreamed of working and playing and living. It's, a, it's great. It's a lot easier running through Times Square when they have it blocked off than just doing a regular work day. <laughs> That's right. You've got your shirts on, you guys. Yeah. Cancer support community. This is your call yeah. today. Uh, Team Marin, tell people why you're running. Why is it this organization? Well, uh, my uh, wife, Marin Macy, passed away in September of 18 of ovarian cancer and uh, we began our association with cancer support community uh, in 2016. They give over 50 million dollars in free services to people living with cancer and their families and it's, it's all across the country and Brian has been associated with them for a few years as well. And I, I would just like to say as a member of the Broadway community in New York City, uh, I know I speak for everybody who works in this industry who knows Jason and who knew Marin. I am so honored to be running uh, in her memory and representing Jason and their and their legacy together. 
And uh, so I'm really proud to be here supporting Kansas Support Community and, and Marin Maisie, who's a truly incredible person. And finally, you're running through your community. This is your workspace. The world coming here to experience We've running. We've got shows in a few hours, so we, <laughs> might, we might just head over and get a jump on it. That's right. You know, I got to leave people with what's on your mind is this reason and this purpose. As you go towards the finish line, I'm sure you're going to have thoughts of Marin and, and her spirit making this trek with you today. Absolutely. She's constantly with me, but she's nothing more than a, 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 my biggest cheerleader in everything I ever did in my life and with her and, and running. She didn't run with me, but she would be right there at you know, mile 13 seeing me across, and I think she's doing that today. Jason, such an inspiration. Brian, it's great to meet you. I wish you guys all the best. I was so thank excited. You, you. Do you want to join us for the last two? I would love it. You know, right. I'll be right Let's back. Go. Let's go. go. You got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's redundant to say, but good evening. I'm Jason Danielly. Uh, I'm the lucky so-and-so who was married to Marin Maisie for 21 glorious years, the best thing that ever happened in my life. Uh, I'm so happy to have dear friends from the Broadway community here uh, to uh, support Marin's memory. Marin's brother, Mark would have been with us, but their mother, Donna, at 88, uh, still going to the gym, uh, slipped and fell a couple of weeks ago, broke her wrist, and he's there helping her get through that time, but they join us in spirit. Now, for her Broadway and West End theater work, Marin was nominated three times for the Tony Award, an Olivier Award nomination in London's West End, among many, many others the high honor of being inducted into the American Theater Hall of Fame came to her in 2017. Now many actors and performers are identified with what they've done, their resume. But Marin went way beyond all of her extraordinary work credits and became revered for who she was. She was a born leader. She led by example, always 100%, was compassionate and a positive light and a rough business. Marin's favorite flower was the sunflower. And the sunflower always turns its face to the light, and that's what Marin did. Now, during her journey with ovarian cancer, she called her chemotherapy healing therapy. She would ask a blessing on the drug that was being infused into her body to help eradicate the cancer and not curse it. She didn't like to use the words fight or battle. Her, her journey wasn't awful or it wasn't a horrendous disease. She wanted to put positive words and thoughts out to the universe in order to attract positive change for herself. And singing and performing was also a part of her healing therapy, which I'll talk about in a moment. But positive love and light gave her a better quality of life than if she had folded her arms and anger and defiance and despair. That was just her way, our way. Marin was beloved by the theater community because of her spirit on top of all that talent. You wanted to be near her and were drawn to her radiance. Now, I've named Marin's power of positive thinking Marin's sunflower power. And we'll continue to talk about it and share it with others as well as our advocacy in finding an early detection test for ovarian cancer, of which there currently is none. To be continued. But in honor and memory of Marin, the wonderful folks of CSE have renamed the Founders Award for Empowerment, uh, which we received in 2016, the Marin Maisie Award for Empowerment. And it is my great pleasure to present the inaugural one tonight. Now, Marin joined the Broadway revival of The King and I in 2016 after her cancer went into remission. It was at Lincoln Center, directed by Bartlett Scher, playing the leading role of Anna Leon Owens. Now, in that company, the young ingenue, 
of Top Tim was played by the beautiful and talented Ashley Park. Now, Ashley was diagnosed at the age of 15 with an acute form of leukemia. And this award recognizes her consistent and unwavering commitment to those touched by cancer by talking about her cancer journey publicly and lending her talent and energy in support of cancer patients. Marin recognized a kindred spirit in Ashley. Her compassion, kindness, and sense of humor was not only endearing but comforting. Two people on different but similar paths. I know Marin would agree with me that we hope this award will empower Ashley to see this as a launching pad for her continuing advocacy. And it is with great pleasure I present the inaugural Marin Maisie Award for Empowerment to Ms. Ashley Park. Wow, you know what? Um, when Jason first reached out about this award, I don't think I've ever had my breath taken away in the way that it was, because not because it was an award, but because it was Marin. It is Marin. And um, to be very candid with you, I thought to myself, why me? And at first I thought, well, is it because I, I got to work with Marin and I adore her and I was so inspired by her. But then I thought, you know what, everybody, everybody who met Marin <laughs> felt that way. And then um, I thought, is it because I'm a cancer survivor? And to be honest, I was diagnosed at 15. Um, I was inpatient for eight months. I went through six rounds of chemo lost all my hair, didn't get to talk to people for a very long time. And um, after that, at that age, all I wanted to do was move on and forget about it. And to me, I thought, what, what did I do that was special in any way? I think that anybody in that circumstance, all I did was want to live, and all I did was try to survive. Um, for myself and for the people around me. And to me, you know, shit happens to everybody, right? Everybody has shit. And um, so I didn't, I, I will be very honest in saying that for a very long time, I felt very awkward and uncomfortable um, whenever anybody told me, you're such an inspiration, you're a hero, um, you give me hope because I didn't feel that that was my um, intention or purpose. And fast forward to um, meeting Marin. All I'd known of her was that I'd stalked so many YouTube videos of her growing up. I watched her Andrew Lloyd Webber trio too many times. And um, when Bartlett Shear and Andre Bishop said that we'd be welcoming her into our family at the Lincoln Center, um, I for some reason, I remember so vividly, I was so excited for her, and I was like, you're not even, you don't even know her. Why are you so excited for this woman? And it's because I felt for her such excitement in knowing that the the trauma and the what she had just been through, she was going to be able to step in and to be with people again and to do what she loved again, and that I got to be witness to that. And so when I met Marin, <laughs> You know, the hardest thing for anybody who's sick is um, is knowing that, is holding the burden of causing those people who you love the most um, pain or worry, especially as someone who's young and especially who's someone with someone who has the, the, the loved community that Marin has and had. And um, so when she started rehearsals, at the Lincoln Center, everybody was so worried about her, and she was just, you know, she'd come to me and she'd go, oh God, 
you know, I, 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 I wish everybody would have the faith in me that I had, you know, and um, I, I remember that after her first, her first week of shows, we were just having a passing conversation, and I could see the relief on her face and seeing that everybody who came to watch her, she said, you know, for the first time in a while, all of my loved ones are here sitting back for three and a half hours watching me bring them laughter and joy again and not being worried about me. And that is the biggest relief for anybody going through that kind of experience. And that is what's so beautiful about the cancer support community. And I, and I so value your mission and I so value um, what Jason and Marin um, has seen in this community. And I have never, I have never witnessed a love like Jason and Marin's, their partnership. I've never seen a, um, a team of people find strength in and for each other in the way that they do. I'm so inspired by them. And so I'm so humbled and honored to receive this inaugural award in Marin's name. And you know, I, I have to, th I'm, you know, th thank you, Marin, so much because, you know, Whoever said to not meet your heroes because they're going to disappoint you, they can go take a hike because <laughs> <laughs> they can't. Um, and so all I can say is I don't, I don't, I still am processing. I don't quite know what I did to earn this, this, this honor, this big, big honor. But I do know that I'm going to put that plate where I can see it every morning when I wake up, and I'm going to live my life in the light and the champion way that Marin did and will. And thank you so much. Okay, I mentioned that singing and uh, performing was part of Marin's healing therapy, we call it HT for short. Giving joy to others and sharing her passion gave her something in return, hope. I'm so happy to be able to introduce to you three of Marin's dearest friends and colleagues, all Tony Award winning actresses who will share some of Marin's favorite songs that um, took on a significance during her journey with cancer. Donna Murphy, who Marin starred with in the musical Passion, also starred in the 1996 revival of The King and I. And one song in particular from that show spoke to Marin in a profound way, given the difficulties and challenges she faced. A song that affirmed her dedication to keeping her head up and, getting, and putting a positive mindset front and center to her healing process. Karen Ziemba and Marin met doing the off-Broadway musical review And the World Goes Around. A uh, show celebrating the music of Candor and Ebb. The title song of that show was the one Marin sang many, many times over her career, and on further and deeper reflection gave her a perspective on the larger picture. Many times we said to one another during the ups and the downs, it is what it is. And just so you get a better, well-rounded picture of Marin, and not to insinuate that she was all introspective and contemplative, Deborah Monk will share the kind of song that Marin was well known for, uh, a balls-to-the-walls, brassy, Broadway broad number that Deb introduced in the musical Steel Pier. Marin sang that song several times, inspired by Deb, and knowing a thing or two about being loved by everyone. And joining them are some of our dear friends, and longtime colleagues, our longtime music director on the piano, Mr. Joseph Thalken. <laughs> on bass, the man who has played more concerts with us than anybody, Mr. Pete Donovan. <laughs> and on drums, our good pal, Larry Lully. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Donna Murphy, Karen Ziemba, and Deborah Monk.
not a club girl. Okay, here we go. I hold my head erect and whistle a happy tune so no one will suspect I'm afraid. While shivering in my shoes I strike a careless pose and whistle a happy tune so no one ever knows I'm afraid. <sighs> the result of this deception is very strange to tell. When I fool the people I fear, I fool myself as well. I whistle a happy tune, and every single time, the happiness in the tune convinces me that I'm not afraid. Make believe you're afraid. And the trick will take you far. You may be as brave as you make believe you are. I'm not afraid Make believe you're brave And the trick will take you far You may be as brave As you make believe you are Sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're sad, but the world goes around. Sometimes you lose every nickel you had, but the world goes around. Sometimes your dreams get broken in pieces, but that doesn't alter a thing. Take it from me, 
There's still gonna be a summer, a winter, a fall, and a spring. And sometimes a friend starts treating you bad, but the world goes round. And sometimes your heart breaks with a deafening sound. Somebody loses. Somebody wins, and one day it's kicks, then it's kicks in the shins. But the planet spins, and the world goes round and round. The world goes round. Sometimes your dreams get broken in pieces, but that doesn't matter at all. Take it from me, there's still gonna be a summer. Time ago, a lady whose name was Carmen drove a man wild until he was out of control. I truly believe that I am a man de Carmen, in spite of the fact I do not. That girl was exactly like me. We share this philosophy. Ole, I say, I'm not the type who's ready for dating someone steady. I'm everybody's girl. On Sunday night, it's Danny. On Monday, maybe Manny. I'm everybody's girl. 
there's a point to my behavior, which is smart girls always share their riches. So if your heart comes, don't let it. You're certain to regret it. All others come and get it. I'm everybody's girl. I could never be a cow hands girl. You want to know why? La, 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 la. You want to know why? why? I just can't keep my calves together. I'm everybody's girl. Some old Greek called Aristotle said it. If you got it, oh, I not spread it. So don't go rattling any sabers, exerting any labors. Just share me with your neighbor. I'm everybody's girl. I'm girl. You won't be disappointed. I'm also double jointed. I'm everybody's girl. Though it keeps a lot of fellas cursing. I'm a person that needs dispersing. It's so to reaffirm my status. Right. I feel grand. Thank you.